pastor said to me, he said, we have had many preachers come over over the years that would come and encourage us. He said, but you're the only one that came and challenged us. He said, you're the only one that came and challenged us and, and got at us. And, and, uh, and they said they were very moved. And actually, that's part of the reason they asked me to come back to help them implement some of the things that I ministered to them about. And so we're going to make it happen. So now we're family with them in Uganda. And so we're going to talk about some other things that we want to do with them. So are y'all ready? Open your Bibles with me to Mark chapter 16, verse 15, if you would. Mark chapter 16. And for those of you that are new, I see some new faces that I haven't seen before. Glad to have you. And I'll meet you after service. And glad to have you as well and stuff. And, you know, I like my, all my people and anyway, everybody pretty and hit of me. So your beautiful faces. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and I'll begin to, we'll minister there, start there. And when you get it, I'm coming out of the King James Version, so some of you may have a different version, so it may read slightly different, but we'll be in the same, same place. And when you have it, just say amen, or sh- let, me, let me know, uh, nod, so we'll know where we're at. Are we there? It's on the screens for you that don't have it. It says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world, and Preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The word preach means to, to herald or to proclaim. If you find in verse 15, it says that, that you shall preach the gospel. That, that word preach means to proclaim or to herald, just like a paper. You, you, you're shouting it out. And for the most part, the church is pretty good about doing this part. We're good about proclaiming the gospel. We're good about trying to get people saved. But turn to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. And if you don't have, just write it down. You don't have to turn with us. If you, yeah, I'd rather you listen to me if, you, if that's going to distract you. 28 and verse 18. I give you the scriptures because I want you to, you know, have something to go back and study and to make sure that what I'm saying is what's written. And also to establish the word of God on. Matthew 28, 18. Verse 18 says this, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It pretty much says the same thing as the other one did, right? Verse 20 says this, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now that word teach in verse 19 is to disciple. It means to enroll as a scholar. It means to instruct. Now watch this. But not by words only. See, a lot of times we're trying to get people to come to church, be saved, but then we're not giving them a good example. And then the word, uh, the, there's another word, that, you know, this, this word, Jesus was a good example of this, but in verse 20, in the same chapter, the word teach means to learn, to teach, but it also means, observe means to guard from laws. So if I'm going to help somebody come into the kingdom, I also have to demonstrate to them and I also have to help when they say guard from laws of observation, you're helping them not get lost. Who need help? Everybody good? All right. Just want to make sure we're on the same sheet of music. It's all good. Need me to repeat? Wave at me. I'll repeat it. To, it means to detain, this word we're talking about, observe, to detain, to withhold, hold fast, keep. And here's another, it says preserve. See, a lot of times we want to teach people, we not, we, they, but we got to give them, they say, and to observe. We got to give them a picture to look at. Now, I'm going somewhere with this because the title of the sermon is Serving Christ in Our Community. Serving Christ in Our Community. And a lot of times we, 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 you know, as a church, which God gave us the great commission, but we always want to get people saved. But yet we, 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 that's not all he told us to do. 
John 10, 10 says what? He said, the thief cometh not but for to kill, steal, and destroy. He said, I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Now, what it does, look at the first part of that verse. He said, the thief cometh but to kill, steal, and destroy. Think about your community. Is it the way God really wanted it to be? Does, does, does the earth reflect God the way he wants to be reflected? Okay. A, and so what I'm talking about, there's more, than, there's more than one job we have to do. Yes, we're to save people, but we're also to, to restore the earth. Even if, you're, if you're, nobody in your community gets saved, you still have an obligation to your community to produce peace. And so part of that may be, you know, because everyone, let me, I'm trying to give a good example of this. Everyone that you assist may not ever get saved. So just because they don't get saved, you're not going to be good to them? Just because they won't receive Christ and show up at your church, you're not going to be nice to them? Just because they don't want to receive Jesus Christ, you're not going to help them? See, these are the things that sometimes we do you know, unconsciously as Christians. We say we don't, but a lot of times we do. Think about it. When the last time you helped your neighbor? It ain't got real quiet now. <laughs> now I need that church mouth. So let me go on and see this. Acts 2.42 says this. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. Notice it was meeting from house to house. They was breaking bread from house to house. Matthew 5.13, turn that with me if you would. I'm just opening up a new series, so we're not going to get too deep into it, but I want to get it started so we can have somewhere to start from. Verse 13 in Matthew chapter 5. He said, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? If it is therefore good for nothing but to cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Now notice now we put salt in meats. We put salt on meat to preserve meat. Is that not right? So if God placed you in a community and you're not preserving your community, what did he just say about that salt? See, a lot of times we're only looking, looking one way. We get tunnel vision in the church and we look one way. We're just going to get you saved. And if you don't get saved, then that's pretty much it for you. But he just said, you're the salt of the earth. You're the preserved the earth, meaning that you suppose, watch this now, what does salt do? It preserves it from loss, further damage. So if we're not preserving our community to the point that there's no further damage, then we're not doing our job. Yes, we want everybody to get saved. Yes, God wants every man to be saved. But let me ask you this question. In, in Timothy, you'll find he said, God desires that all men be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. Is that not true? Question, is there, are there people in hell right now? Then there, that's my point I'm making to you. God wants it to happen, but it didn't happen, but that still, didn't stop him from doing other things. And sometimes we let that stop us because we can't get people saved. We won't go do nothing else. But God said we're supposed to preserve wherever we are. He didn't say if everybody got saved. He said you're the salt of the earth. You'll preserve the earth. And there shouldn't be no further damage to this earth as long as you where you're supposed to be. Now, that's some good stuff right there. Because, you know, because some people say, well, I don't know how to get nobody saved. But you can preserve them until somebody shows up. Me and my mama used to make them preserves, man. It would be some good stuff. They don't do that no more. You know what I'm saying? They don't do that no more. They take them peaches because there's so many peaches. What's going to happen? If we let the peaches lay out there on the ground or stay in the basket, they're going to rot. And so mama and them came up with a plan. Let's make preserves. That's what we're supposed to be doing in our community. That's what we should be doing in our world. They land around. They waiting it. And so we don't let them get no further spots. We're going to preserve them until time that we can get them into the kingdom. 
Isaiah 62 and 6 says this. I have set watchmen upon the walls. What is a watchman? A watchman is somebody that will watch, and if trouble will come, they will cry out. So the, the, the protectors will come out and protect the walls. Well, the same thing, when God sets you in a community, you are a watchman. If you are saved, then you are a watchman. And typically what a watchman does, they cry out. So what you should be doing, crying out to God over your community, crying out to God over what's going on in your community. If you see, if you see trouble coming, you should cry out to God. God, they are selling drugs in this area, and in the name of Jesus, I take authority. See, that's what we're supposed to be doing. But what we say now, some of us, not all of us, well, if they want to do drugs, let them do drugs and be drugged up. That's it. No, we, come on. We don't say it out loud to nobody. We'll tell our close friends, but we know we're telling the truth. I don't talk to him about drinking alcohol. It's a, it'll mess up your liver. But if he won't drink it, let him be drunk. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Everybody look at me. No, you say that stuff about people all the time. And see, but I'm saying let's be honest about it. What should we be doing? If they still, if they don't know, because here's what the thing is. Sometimes people are just ignorant. Sometimes they have been called in advice. It makes no difference. It's not your choice to decide, watch this, whether they go or don't go. Your choice is to do what God tells you to do. If he puts you in a place, then he puts you there for a reason. And if he puts you there for a reason, then you, you need to fulfill your reason, your purpose, that he put you there. Oh, well, you know, I, I got tired. I got my own problems. Well, that might be when your problems persisting because you're not doing your job. You know, they, was, they were saying that a, a, a byproduct when somebody has, has arthritis, they said the first thing you don't want to do is just sit down all the time. They say you want to keep moving. And some of y'all have spiritual arthritis. <laughs> you're there because you're not, you're not active in doing what God tells you to do because you're waiting on God to come do something over here about this, but you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And, and the last time I checked, he said a, a workman is worthy of his hire, and it makes no difference if he ain't paid you today. He's still going to pay you, so you should be working anyway. And everything you do is a seed. And so we have to find out, you know, what's holding us back. Here go verse 14. It says, ye are the light of the world, and a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Oh, let's stop right there. Them good works right there now. How many people glorifying God because you live in their neighborhood? Oh, anybody going to raise their hand? Because there's no good words to good works. He just said it right there. He said that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So, see, so all about getting people saved, sometimes people don't want to get saved because what they see, what they see in you. Well, you know, you know, and I know we like to follow this one guy that, that, you know, that's on TV all the time. And, and, you know, God ain't done with me yet. Yeah, that's an excuse. It's just an excuse for you to do what you do. But then because when it, when it comes down to it, God's going to say, well, I gave you the Holy Spirit. I died for you. You got my Holy Spirit. You got the blood to cover you. Have my word. Then why are you still having problems? See, a lot of things we make excuses for, we have no reason to make excuses for. A Christian cannot be defeated. I don't care how you put it. Satan can come from wherever he is. I don't even know where he is right now. He don't want to be around me. Oh, that's the truth because I ran into him this just, uh, just uh, yesterday. A young lady was having, and we was having this, uh, uh, they were baptizing him in the Holy Spirit. I was calling for, him to be, I was calling for him to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, I'm praying, and next thing I know, I noticed the room start, everybody in the room just started moving around, and all of a sudden I hear all this noise, chairs being turned over, knocked over, knocked down. And I said, what's going on? So then I pointed to the one guy because I was doing something. I pointed to him and said, go handle it. He ain't move. So I had to put the microphone down, and I went and handled it. He don't want to be around me because I got him out of it. Young, young lady that got up was at peace. All that kicking and jumping was over it. Over it. And you don't, you don't need no special assignment from God. I'm a believer. I ain't had to wait and say, God, now what you want me to do? God, please show up. You know, I ain't got to do all that. 
He with me. I went back there and handled it. Another one's going over here shaking in the corner. I don't know what that was about either. So I want to lay my hands and got that one from shaking too. Why? This is what we're supposed to be doing. We can't be defeated. And so, but yet, we're defeated because we won't do nothing. We're not letting our light shine before men because we got too many problems. I don't know how many problems, I don't care how many problems I have. One problem I'm not going to have is being me in Christ. And see, whoever you are is who you are at home. See, that, with the problem we have, we got, these, we got these dual personalities. We got dual personalities. We got this public persona, and then we got this private me. Well, you know, in, in, in old school terms, we call it two-faced. In Bible terms, they call it hypocrites. And if we do it in medical terms, you're schizophrenic. Or you, or you, you know what they call it, bipolar. Some of y'all tripolar. No, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> but my, 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 my point to you is sometimes everyone is not going to be warned directly by, by, by ministering directly or trying to minister to them directly. See, it takes a leading of the Holy Spirit to win people to God. And that's why you have to be sensitive to him when he says, they're ready. Go, go, go do this. Or they're ready. Go do that. But in the meantime, my light should be shining. In the meantime, I should be doing some good works. You know, some people, so, you know, matter of fact, <laughs> it was funny. I was with a young lady, uh, and we was at the youth conference. So we sat down, and she was talking to me. You know, they, matter of fact, they took care of me. They didn't let, hardly let me go anywhere by myself. I got escorted everywhere I went. They carried my bags everywhere I went. I mean, it, I mean, I was like, it's just awesome. I can move over here. This is awesome. I ain't had to, they wouldn't let me pay for nothing. They, they, they took care of me, you know, so y'all should be, you know, you thank them. We're going to make a video for them, but, but they took care of me. So anyway, so we, we sit in there and, um, and the young lady and we were just talking in general. And then all of a sudden the young lady dropped a piece of paper on the ground. I said, what's up with that? What's up with the paper on the ground? Reason I'm saying it because some of our communities are messy, but we won't pick up nothing, but we live there. But I'm a Christian. See, and he, he, this is what messes with people. I'm a Christian called by God, but yet I won't do nothing unless it's connected to the church. Who would want to come to your church? I know I wouldn't. I'm the first one, I'm going to tell you. I only want to be there. Because if this is how y'all do it, only when you're commanded to do something, you can't do it on your own. I don't know. Sound tough, don't it? But it's the truth. God said that, first of all, the job that you have, those that have jobs, your job is not your source. Your job has a dual purpose. One, God wants to put you there so he can have light in that company. Not to evangelize. Now, let's get that straight. Because most people want to get paid to evangelize, want the company to pay them to evangelize people. God didn't call you to, he called you to work. When they pay you, they're paying you to work. But you also can shine light, though, in a place of darkness. You ever notice when the light switch is on, it don't decide if it, what, did somebody pay me to pay the electric bill? The light don't worry about, the switch don't worry about, did somebody pay the electric bill? It does its job. It just flips on. And the light shines, right? The same thing's supposed to happen to every believer. You should be shining regardless because it ain't your, your deal to find out about the Jesus said, matter of fact, in Proverbs, you'll find, he says that the, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. If the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, that means your light comes from him. Well, here's, this, see, that brings us to another problem. Because if you're not hanging out with him and kicking it with him, your light ain't going to shine as bright as it could. Some people got them, you know, some people run around with a candle for real. They just a candle. They, they wick about to burn out. They just like way down. Matter of fact, what's them thing? My daughter got like a thousand of them. Them little old bitty thing they give out scent. My daughter like scent. So a little thing. Every time I turn around, she got one somewhere in the house. Some people about like that. Little old bitty candle thing about like that. And by 30 minutes, they're going to be burned out. Why? Because it's connected to your relationship with God. 
The less time you spend with him, the less light you're going to have. And everybody like, you know, I like to say, well, you know, God knows I got to go to work. Yeah, God knows you got to go to work. That's when you should get up earlier. They said, man, I wish he'd have stayed over there in Uganda. <laughs> no, I'm talking about this because, see, we, time is getting short. We don't really have time to play church no more. For those of you, and, I, and let, me, let me say this because most people, most preachers won't say this to you, but I will. If you're just playing with God and stuff, you're not really in with God, just go on and quit and just go on out there and have your fun. Because when it's over, baby, it's over. And it ain't going to be no fun. So you might well get your fun. I don't, don't have half fun. Get real fun. Because when it's over, it's over. And you ain't going to get a chance to re- redeem yourself. So if you're playing, then just go on, and be for, go on out there and do your thing. But if you're going to be in the house, then let's come on in the house. That's fun in the house, too. You know, I used to think, you know, wasn't no, you couldn't do nothing with no fun, and probably my grandson think the same thing. You can't be saved and have fun. You can have plenty of fun. Matter of fact, I had so much fun over there when, when I was over there, and I wasn't doing nothing wrong. I was having fun. I walked down. I was meeting people, walking the streets. And when I show you some of the videos and stuff, it's like some of the stuff you see on TV. Man, all these people on these motorcycles just jumping through traffic, cars, bottle up, and people just walking around. Matter of fact, I got thrown off because I didn't understand the culture. This young lady was, I wanted her to make me this coat, which didn't work out, I'm going to tell y'all that. And uh, I, <laughs> I was trying to get me a jacket made while I was over there, because, you know, I got my own little style. I want little stuff, you know. But anyway, so I got what was going on. We was caught the cab, bought a cab. You know, you uh, hire a cab for the day or whatever. And then they take you where you want to go. They'll pick you up, make sure you go. So anyway, I wouldn't understand it. So the young lady was walking, and I noticed she kept sticking her hand back like this. And I'm like, what's she doing? I don't know her like that. She just, and she just kept putting her hand back doing, doing this. I'm like, what is she doing, you know? I don't, I don't know her like that. So anyway, I was talking to a, a bunch of guys and stuff, and we got to talking and stuff. And, and you know, they, oh, you, you must be a, a wrestler. Matter of fact, it was funny. One dude, let me change subject right quick. I'm preaching at the conference, and while I'm outside talking and stuff, you know, meeting the people, talking to them. One dude walks up to me and says, do you wrestle? I said, no, I don't wrestle. I <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny. This stuff, if it, if it didn't happen, I wouldn't be to tell you. I just want to wrestle you. I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Who want to wrestle another man? I'm like, what is wrong with you? I said, man, get on out of here. Well, I cast something out of you. I just want to wrestle you. I'm like, what? I'm like, what is going on? But anyway, so back, back in what a girl is. And so anyway, so I was talking to these other gentlemen and stuff, you know, and they were so, oh, man, look at your watch. And I was telling them what a watch like this calls. I took it off, handed it to them. So they were just having conversation. And uh, so anyway, so she thought, because she said that she thought, so she came up and she grabbed my hand. And, uh, I, you know, and she interlocked the fingers. And I'm like, okay, we, we done changed the levels. I don't know what this means. So anyway, sometimes we don't know what stuff mean, and I'm trying to help y'all understand what stuff mean, but I still didn't know what that meant. But anyway, but I did find out over there that culture, they hold hands, because matter of fact, Y'all need to start knowing what y'all supposed to be doing and do what y'all supposed to be doing. Don't be wrestling with guys if you're a guy. But the reason I'm telling you that is because sometimes we, we, we do things as it relates to, like, Christendom, and we don't even know what we're doing. I was over there with them, and I didn't know what I was doing. And some of us are Christians and don't know, don't know what we're doing. That, and that's nothing against anyone. But that tells me you need to do a little bit, spend a little bit more time with God. Spend a little bit more time in the Word. Because the way you conduct yourself, watch this, can run people away or draw people to God. See, and I, I didn't know what they was doing. They could have ran me away until I talked to somebody and they explained to me. Now, the wrestling wasn't included, but the holding hands was. So the next time when I was going to the youth conference and one of the young ladies grabbed my hand and walked me all the way around the building, I just held her hand and walked around the building. So... I just like, I'm going to go with it. But I'm not going to do the dude hand too long now. Got, he got about like 30 seconds. I still can't get past it, you know. I'm still working on that part of me, you know what I'm saying. My grandson don't even hold my hand. I'm going to have to work on it. Me and I'm going to practice before I go back. Damien. We're going to practice holding hands before I go back. 
You can help me. <laughs> but he, here it is. He's saying, let your light so shine. He said, you're the salt. So we got to start letting our light out in our community. We can't just want to pr- proclaim it, but never show a demonstration of the goodness of God that's in us. Because without doing so, then what are you doing? Uh, here's the, the sad thing about it. More neighbors know you complain than you do give glory to God. So-and-so didn't do this. I wish so-and-so do this. Oh, Lord, we can't elect this person. Because see, all of those complaints, but no glory for God. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your what? I got one person. Thank you so much, sweetheart. And I didn't pay her. Your good works. How many people are doing good works in their community? Right? You can, sh- you can wave your hand. You can stand up and shout if you need to. Six people. Six, seven, eight. But then it has to be consistent. One of the examples that I gave, I said, sometimes there are single, single mothers in your neighborhood, there are grandmothers in your neighborhood. Then what is wrong with you helping the single mother out for, for one hour during the week? You know what, sweetheart, I'm going to keep the baby so you can get some free time. Let the babies come over to my house, and I'll keep them for two hours. And then you just... Get shower, do whatever you want to do, breathe, whatever you want to do. What do you think will happen to that mama when you start doing that? What do you think will happen to her? See, you know what you think? Most people think about what's going to happen to them. Oh, I got to keep them kids. Them kids. I don't want them in my house. Well, then set up the backyard for them then and do something with them in the backyard. Come up with some creative. But see, what will you do to this mother showing good works? Ain't asking her for nothing. Ain't trying to, well, you know, I'm going to keep your kids, but I want you to get saved, all that stuff. I'm not trying to make a deal. No. What will happen when we start doing this thing on a regular basis? What, I mean, seriously, think about it. What will our world really be when we run around and everybody just doing good stuff? People have, have a need, and they don't have to ask you because they're over there starving and counting pennies. But you, you just walk on and say, hey, you know what? Can I just cook dinner for you today? Matter of fact, I cooked so much food today. I just want to bless you with some of this food. Is that okay? What, is there anything special you want? Because I just want to give some food. We don't do that. You know why? You know, I, I got to worry about what I'm doing, but what, what's, what I'm going to eat tomorrow. And then in the halftime, you don't want that food you got no way. That's why McDonald's rich. You know I'm telling the truth. That's why Burger King rich. But the reason I'm saying this to you is it sounds so, so simple, but yet we're not doing it. It's so simple just to, to love somebody, to show somebody some, some love, show somebody some goodness, and show somebody some kindness. Now watch this, regularly. See, we want to be kind one day. I'm talking about consistently kind. Consistently doing something. You know, when you start keeping the kids, okay, keep them every, every, once a week. For two hours every week. What is it going to hurt you if you have the opportunity? Nothing. Matter of fact, I used to do it in my neighborhood. Matter of fact, kids used to come knock on my door. I don't, I, in my little apartments, there's one little girl, but she don't live there no more. She would come down to my uh, apartment and knock on the door. Can you come out and play with me? Now I'm a grown man. I said, first of all, do your mama know you're down here? And let's go down here and talk to your mama and get your mama phone number so she know you're down here. And I did that for a whole year. A whole year. You know what? I didn't ask the, doc, the little girl, Can you, do you want to receive Jesus? No, I just loved on her. And the mama saw the same thing. I loved on her, and I didn't want nothing to do with the mama. See, a lot of times guys want to hang out with the mama kids because they want to get with the mama. I don't want none of the mama. No, I'm telling you, see, things that we could do that changes. It may not do nothing to the mama, but I, I guarantee you the little girl got to change her heart. And then here, after she left, then here come the ones downstairs. <laughs> tick, tick, tick. Can you come out and play? Let's go out and play. Why? It's just good works. Even if nobody ever believed I'm a good person, they still saw me doing good things, and I wasn't boasting about myself. Too many of us run around telling everybody you're a Christian, but we can't tell by the way you act. Come on now. We can't tell by the way you conduct yourself. And what I mean, you ain't doing nothing bad, but you ain't doing nothing good either. You're just like there. Just there, you know, like, okay, well, what's the purpose? I got Jesus in me. Well, what are you doing with the Jesus that's in you? What is Jesus getting to do? He ain't getting to do nothing because you won't do nothing. I ain't fussing at you. I'm just pointing it out. Write this down. Everybody, get your pen out. Write this down. (laughs) 
invasion. Invasion. I-N-V-A-S-I-O-N. Invasion. I'm going to give you an acronym. Everybody ready? I, involved. The N is going to play on words N, I, N. Involved in various activities serving in our community or serving in our neighborhood. Involved in Various activities serving in our neighborhood. That's invasion. See, we want to win everybody for Christ, but we're not willing to invade their community, in our community. God put you in your community for the sake of saving your community, preserving your community, and that your community be a place of peace. Anything that Satan has torn, torn tore up, God has given you the ability to reproduce, to repair, restore. I gave an example. So if you, if you were in a war-torn area and your city got tore up through war, would you just walk around the big, big holes and the bullet, the, 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 the casings and stuff, or would you do something about it? That was a the question. Then won't you do something about your communities now? Because, see, we have been commissioned. God never changed the commission. When he told Adam in the beginning, he said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish. He said, just like the Garden of Eden, I want the rest of the world to look like it. Now you're going to do it. Well, he didn't come to Jesus and say, when Jesus came, he didn't say, no, don't do that no more. Do this. No, Jesus said the same thing. He said, I was sent to deal with what Satan did. And we are sent to do the same thing. And it's just not with people because it says the whole world is, is in anticipation. He says the earth is even groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Well, who are the sons? He said the ones that are led by the Spirit. Well, one of the things to be led by the Spirit is to be led by the Word of God. And the Word of God tells us that we can replenish, restore our communities. You don't have to get permission from anybody to restore your community. You begin to speak God's Word over your community, and you begin to act in good works in your community. I'm not telling you to go serve your whole life. I'm telling you, what's two hours out of the week? You got seven days, and you serve two hours every week. What is that? Nothing. You spend more time in that watching TV, listening to music, eating, talking. No, I'm just giving examples of these different things that we do that we do excessive of. So all of these opportunities we have, if we really want to present Jesus to our world, then we need to get involved in our community. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you go in the name of, in the, name of the church. I'm telling you to go in the, in just in Jesus' name, allow him to use you to serve someone else to go and help someone else. And I'm not telling you start no ministry because that's the worst thing you can ever do. Just go start helping people. Just start helping people. Okay, I'm going to do this. Matter of fact, I saw this man, this elderly lady. I see all the time she's struggling to do this. Well, go help her. Once a week, all you can do is pick a day. Oh, okay, I'm going to go there Monday and I'm going to do this for two hours. Or ask them, hey, I want to help you sometimes. I see you doing this. Is it okay if I come over here and, and cut your grass? Is it okay if I wash your windows? Is it okay if I, if I, I, I pick up the dirt out and the paper out of your yard? See, all of those things would, would change the hearts of people and would remove all of the, the, the blockage sometimes when it would be easy. They can ask you, well, why are you doing what you're doing? You know, I just, you know, I just, I just, you know, love, love people. I love people. I love God. And I just want to be a help. You know that'll throw them off because most people run to them talking about let's get saved, you know. And I had a good experience while I was over in Uganda. I was, because, uh, you know, it's Muslims over there as well. And so it was a little young, young, young girl and had to go upstairs to the bathroom. And so I'm waiting to go to the restroom. And the little girl came with her sister because she was watching her sister. They both were small. She said, are you a Muslim? I said, no, no. She said, are you a Christian? I said, Yes. She said, I said, what are you? She said, I'm a Christian too. See, she's willing to witness. She's willing to do what she could do. Now, what are you willing to do? You're an adult. You're free. You have the opportunity. You have time. You have the spirit of God. That means you have the strength and you have the ability. Some of you can help people do other things. Write resumes. Look for jobs. But my point to you is, what are you doing for God? And you don't have to go around and, and waving the flag of Jesus because you're running people off. Just help people. Be willing to help people. Proverbs 11.30 says this. He that winneth souls is wise. I want to say it to you this way. You must be wise to win souls. 
See, we, we, we took it in the first vernacular, the first way it was written. Oh, yes, he that wins souls is wise. Well, you got to be wise to win souls. And I'm telling you how to be wise. This is a wisdom way to go win some more souls. You don't have to say nothing, just do good works. He said that they'll glorify my Father which is in heaven. Now, now we always say we want to give God glory. Then here's another way to produce glory for God. And when you start glorifying God, then what, what does God do in response? He shows up. See, and then when he starts showing up, then he the one to start dealing with the hearts of the people. You don't have to do all the dealing with the hearts. You just do the good work, and then they be like, man, in their house, they be like, man, I sure thank God today that somebody helped me because I've been needing help for the longest. You don't know what somebody believes in God for, but you're not, if you're willing to be an answer, then God can use you. Most people want to do certain things. See, like most people want to go travel to Uganda. I want to go over there and preach. But most people ain't want to do some of the stuff I've, I've done in my life. You only know part of what I did. I went out and when I was in, when I first left the military, I joined, went out and started a sidewalk Sunday school in, in, in the Section 8 housing areas in, in, in Georgia. Did that for over a year and then actually went into five different locations by myself because nobody else wanted to go help you do nothing. But see, nobody knew nothing about, that, about me because I, I don't go around broadcasting it. Why? Because I just want to be used of God. That's just my whole thing. Like when he sent me over, I told him the same thing. God, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to go do it. I didn't go try to be nobody else. I ain't try to be no big guy. I only did what God told me to do. And see, because some of you couldn't handle it no way because we went out into the bush out there where they ain't got no toilets, out there where they ain't got no running water. But then them people out there, they, they live that way. And so you go out there and then you're trying to be different. No, I went out there just whatever they, look, I don't really eat no meal. Y'all know I don't eat meat. Next thing I found out, I ate goat and something else. Didn't even know it. But you know why? God said, what I've said before, you just bless it, take it. I'm not going to go out there and, and, and be disrespectful to other people because I'm out there to serve God. And the only reason I let them carry my bags is because they refused. They wanted to be carrying my bag. I tried. No, I got it. No, I got it. No, you're going to take it. And these girls, young ladies, oh, okay, I give them the bag because I ain't going to be fighting. They ain't going to beat me up. And then I can't, you know, because them sisters girls are strong like that. I'm telling you why. They be walking with them things on their head. Like, I seen one girl with two jugs, five-gallon jugs on her head. I'm like, wow, she doing it. I'm going to have to get me a Ugandan wife because them girls are strong out here. I wouldn't have to fight. She'll get them. Get them, baby. <laughs> I did tell him that, though, you know, but the pastor announced to his church, he said he's single. He's looking, so y'all get your eyes open, but I ain't getting no response, so I'm going to have to go back, try it again. <laughs> Isaiah 58 and 12 says this, if I get ready to close. It says, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the former, raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairers of the breach, the restorers of paths to dwell in. So a lot of people are trying to get people saved, but you don't understand sometimes the foundation has been messed up. And until somebody come along that's willing to love and keep loving and keep loving and rebuilding their foundation, they'll never cross back over. See, there has a breach. Until the breach is fixed, you can't stop the enemy from coming in. And this is what we're doing when we begin to love people in our community. We're repairing the breach. Turn to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Look at verse 15. 2.15. He says, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, meaning you go pray for them. Be warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit him? See, we want to pray for people and tell them to be in faith and receive, but yet we don't want to do nothing about their situation. See, when I went into, was getting into, going to this counseling degree, the first thing they said, there was times that you had to unlayer some things. He said you had to deal with what's on top. You had to deal with that layer first. Well, if they got a need in their life and you talk about, oh, believe God in faith, well, then they can't hear you. They can't hear you. They can't hear you. Verse 6, 18. Verse 17. Even so faith it is, hath not works, is dead being alone. So he's saying, you're saying you're a man of faith, but yet you're not doing anything about it. I mean, where's your works that go with your faith? Oh, I believe God. I got faith. Yeah, well, well, you ain't doing nothing. I ain't got too much faith. 1 John 5, 18 says this. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Meaning we should be doing something, but also living truth, talking truth. 
2 Corinthians 5.20 says this, now then, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Do, do anybody know what ambassadors do, really do? They have authority to do stuff, right? When you're connected to a nation ambassador and go there and offer any kind of aid because he has, he has a power of attorney from the, from the president. You connected to Jesus stronger than anybody else and you got a power of eternity. What are you doing with your ambassadorship? What kind of aid are you offering to those that are in need? Let me keep moving because I know it's getting kind of tough now. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. Where's the good? See, we got to start bringing out the good. We got to start unveiling the good in us and let good, you know, <clears throat> everybody don't lay hands on the sick and see them recover all the time. But where's the good that you can do? You may, you may not be a doctor, but you should know how to clean a wound, put a Band-Aid on it. You may, not be, you may not be a chef, but you know how to stir some stew and serve them some crackers. See, these things matter to people. These things will change the heart of people. I'm going to leave you with this. I'm not going to get it. Write down Acts chapter 6, 1 through 10, and then 2 Corinthians 9 through. Matter of fact, let's just go to 1 Corinthians 9. Let's do that one. And then we'll, I'm going to leave you with this statement. 1 Corinthians 9. Verse 19. Paul says this, for though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews became I as a Jew. See, what Paul is saying, whatever was necessary without losing who I am in Christ, he said, I'm willing to identify the people I'm dealing with. De- dealing with. He said, I became servant of all. How many people are really willing to serve? The ones that's willing to serve is the ones that's willing to do the miracle. See, people want to want to do miracles, but they ain't ready to serve. If you ain't willing to serve, you're not going to do miracles. But if you do, you serve, you'll see miracles. And I'm gonna leave you with this statement. And as we close, when a person is down in the in the world, an ounce of help is better than a pound of preaching. Ministry team. Ministry team, come on. Son. Abe, come over here. Stand to your feet if you would. If any of you have a need in your life and you want us to pray with you concerning your need, or concerning anything that you have a desire before God, we want to join our faith with you. Is, is there anyone in here want to receive Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior? Everybody sure of their salvation? Good. If you have a need, we want to pray with you concerning your need. Let's say this with me. Oh, go ahead. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. The rest of you say this with me. Say, I'm going to serve God in any way he desires. Makes no difference what the assignment is. I'm empowered, equipped, wise enough, Strong enough, Strong enough and tough enough and, tough enough, and loving enough, and loving enough to, do the job. to do the job. God bless you. If you need prayer, come forward.